My name is Alicia English and welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited because today we are starting a brand new series on our channel. I don't know about you, but I love Pinterest. There's so many talented people on there and all of the work is amazing. I always look and see all the different things I would love to create myself. The only problem is, is that they often look really expensive to make. And so because I'm all about doing things on the thrift, I wanted to be able to make a Pinterest series where we would use all upcycled and thrifted materials to create the end product. Over the past week, I did a bunch of research online looking up wood wall quilts. It was what I really wanted to make for the first video of this series. I found when I looked that there were so many amazing designs. The only problem is, is that the price points to order one of these myself were even hundreds of dollars. And I knew that I wanted a nice big size one. So I took to Etsy to look at some different examples and looked at price points. And I was just absolutely shocked by how much it would cost if I wanted to order one. I knew that using scraps in the shop, I could make this for a lot less. So today I'm scrolling through Pinterest looking for some wood wall quilt ideas. I clicked a couple of links of some that looked to be my favorite styles in a little bit more of a wood boho style. And when I followed the links, I was really surprised at the cost of what this project would cost if I wanted to buy it for myself. What I'm going to be making is one of those geometric wood wall quilts. I've so wanted to make one for so long and I'm excited that after my busy season, I was left with a lot of scrap wood that's perfect to make use during this project. I framed a lot of wood signs this holiday season and I was left with so much scrap. So I'm really excited to be able to put this to good use and this is actually the perfect thickness for the design that I wanna to create today. To create this project, I wanted to make a nice large wood quilt and so I'm going to use a 24 inch by 36 inch piece of half inch plywood. I had this left over from a huge eight by four foot piece that I had left while I was working on a custom. So this is a perfect size already cut for me, which works out great. Also going to need a pencil and a measuring tape, a variety of wood slat sizes. Today, I think I'm just gonna use my one by twos. Wood glue, you can also use a brad nailer to reinforce. If you don't have a brad nailer, you can just use wood glue. Stain and paint, sandpaper, and a paintbrush. I'm using my favorite Alicia English brushes. You can purchase these on my Etsy shop. You're also going to need a way to cut your wood, so you're going to need a miter saw. I have not made a wood quilt before, so I'm going to follow the steps that I think that I will use to create this. I'll have to see it kind of guided as I go along, but the first thing I'm going to do is find the center point for my board. So regardless of what size board you have, you're going to want to find the center mark. What the material of your backboard actually doesn't matter because I have like wood glue and a bunch of other paint splashes on here. You're not going to see this at the, get, at the end. It's gonna be completely covered. So what I did was I marked my center mark and then because I was 36 inches wide, I was 18 inches to center and then it was two, in, or two feet wide this way, I was 12 to the middle. So I made some 12 inch marks along here so I have the access to be able to make a straight line X across my whole board. I'm going to make my lines using a straight edge following the marks that I created. I'm going to start by cutting some of my ends to 45 degree angles. What I'm doing is I'm putting all my 45 degree angles together so that I have my center point to work off of for the rest of the wood quilt. Now what I can do is trace underneath so that I know where to make my cuts and I'll be able to use the excess that's on the end here to use for some of my shorter pieces. That way I'm using up more waste. Okay, I have lines to cut. I'm going to cut all the pieces that I need to complete the whole quilt and then I'm going to decorate all my pieces so right now I'm working off of this center that I made. And so I know that all my cuts from now on will be 45 degree angles. So I'm going to start working off with my pattern to complete my triangles here, and then I'll fill in the sides. Okay, I want that to be, yeah, eight inches. I'm gonna cut four of them to that because I'm gonna need one for here, one for here, one for here, and one for here. They're all the same. Now I have the remaining cutoff pieces from those longer posts and I can just keep the 45s that were already there, line it up and then make my mark underneath. 
and now I know where to cut. So I have an image that I'm following for my pattern rather than drawing my own for my first one. So I found one I really wanted to make and then what I'm doing is I'm following off the photo online knowing exactly where to piece each of my pieces. So I, all of my pieces from now on are going to be 45 degree angles. So I'm going to make a whole bunch of cuts, put it together and then show you where I'm at before I decorate. To make this neat little arrow section right here, I cut these to eight inches, the middle ones to six and the small ones to four. That way I knew I had a gradient down in scale. Now I just need to finish this little corner down here. I love that I can use all the little tiny scrap ends. I don't have any waste. So fun. Now that I have this side filled in, I'm going to spin it around and fill in the other side and then work from side to side. Now I have both of my two large triangles together and then I need to have two strips on either side here. So about eight pieces, I'm going to put those in and then I have a little bit of detailing to do kind of like the center arrows. I'm so excited to see what this is going to look like when we start adding color. I'm just working off of the center lines that I created. And then I already have a 45 on this same board, so I just slide it in the other side, make my mark, and then cut. It's so fun and easy because you literally only have to cut one end all the time because you're always starting with a 45. I need to fill in a long length, which is actually a small piece and a long piece because I don't want to cut and hold a very small piece under my miter saw. I've drawn two on one board. I'm going to cut this one and then I will have this longer one to hold on to. So I never have to get my hands near my saw. I'm going to need four of the same to create the next level. So I'm going to use four scrap ends at 45 and then just cut all these to match. When cutting a 45, you want to make sure that your wood is actually butt right up to the back and lined up with where you want it. If you're off the back a little bit, your 45s won't be the exact angle you need them to be. I'm making a disaster, but this is so much fun. It's not snowing in Canada for Christmas, so I'm making sawdust snow. <laughs> I've completed these triangles here, and now I've completed these triangles here, but I still have these cute fan ends right here to finish and then just fill in with some long pieces. So what I'm going to do now is work on my two left and right corners. To fill in my end triangles, I need to create eight of the same thing. And so I've created one and I know I need to cut seven more. So I gathered a whole bunch of scrap ends from my bins that I know will be long enough. I'm gonna make eight the same just by tracing them on and cutting them all at the same time. This is so easy. This project has been turning out a lot easier than I actually thought. When you look at this, it's super intimidating and you think there's no way you could possibly cut this if you don't have any woodworking experience. It is so simple. All I'm doing is cutting all my cuts on 45 degrees or 90 degrees. And my project is just like filling in and it's happening a lot quicker also than I planned. I can't wait to add some color to this. It's going to really bring this to life. <laughs> I just shot sawdust at myself. put it all together and I'm going to rip it with the table saw make sure I don't have any overhang before I do the frame. Man. So fun. Okay, let's add color. <laughs> this is the most fun part of this project is getting to apply your color. My new color obsession is like an earthy green, but it's still like enough of a pop of color that it really like brightens what you're working on. So I'm going to use this color that I really like right now and it's called Cameron Green and it's a bear color. You can get this color matched in any paint brand that you like. Um, what I'm going to do is any spots on here that in my sample photo were a grayish color, I'm going to use the green instead. I'm going to use my favorite stain, Provincial uh, is the color by Minwax, and then the rest is just gonna be fresh white. I'm going to distress each of the pieces just slightly to give them that aged look so they don't look new, and then we're gonna be putting a wood frame around the whole piece at the end. So what I'm gonna do now is look at my wood quilt and I'm going to paint each of the parts that look gray in this picture here. I'm going to paint them the green first and then I'm gonna work off of that. So my initial first X that I made is actually going to be green. So I'm gonna take those pieces out, paint them green and then place them back in. 
I'm using my Alicia English brushes. Look at how gorgeous this green is. I'm going to paint a little bit down the sides, but I don't really need to paint full coverage on the side because you're not going to see it, but you don't want to have any of the wood showing along the edge. You want to make sure that at least you're that far down. This green is actually left over from my cabinet that I painted and I liked it so much I made sure to save just a tiny bit at the end for another project. So I'm gonna have to get some more. While I'm waiting for those ones to dry, I'm going to paint my next section, which is going to be green. You wanna make sure that you're placing them down on the same way that you took them out. That way you're not painting the wrong side if you flip them over. You need all your angles to be the same. Oh, and then my corner triangles here actually have to be green as well. I like to use these yellow disposable gloves for dishwashing to use with my stain. That way I don't have to throw out the throwaway ones every single time. I can use them for a week or so until I kind of blow a hole through them. They get fingers off of them when you rub up and down the wood sometimes, but I can use them a lot more times rather than just buying those clear ones that you just huck away. So I'll try to conserve a little bit when not having to buy so much in the shop as well as you know throwing as much in the garbage. So I'm actually going to do all the pieces that are stained next, and then I'm gonna place them back in. I don't wanna get this too scrambled up <laughs> while I'm working on putting all the colors. So here we go. I better move my stain up a little bit before I... gloves too big then have to throw too many gloves out. Oh, yeah. It's not always about convenience. <laughs> my green and my stain pieces are done and it looks a little bit disastrous right now but don't worry we're gonna piece this all back together once we get our remaining raw wood pieces painted white. Then we're going to wood glue all the pieces back exactly where they go and then we're gonna use the brad nail to make sure that they're really secure in place before we put a frame. Now, oh my gosh, that looks so good already. And I haven't even painted the white yet. So I'm going to paint each of the raw wood pieces white now and then put them back into place. This step is to just add some light distressing to each of the pieces. I like that it's going to add a little bit of detail and not make it look like a fresh paint job. I didn't cover full coverage knowing that I was going to do this. But you can see that I have a few rough edges. And so when I use my really soft 220 grit sandpaper, it's going to make this really smooth and it's going to give it that extra detail when it's hanging on the wall. I'll show you a distress piece compared to a not distress piece. Now that I have each of the pieces distressed, I'm going to wood glue each of the pieces onto the wood quilt board. I was going to use my broad nailer and reinforce at the end, but I want to see if it's strong enough just with the wood glue. That way I won't have any divot marks in the top of my wood. I really like the clean look that I'm seeing on each of the pieces. So I'm going to see if this wood glue will hold just well. I just finished gluing and I cannot wait for you to see this, but I want to get the final frame on before I reveal what it looks like all done. I'm so excited with how this turned out. I was able to make this for under $25. I only use scrap in my shop, but if I had to buy new wood and it took me about three hours worth of time, I'm so happy with this and I can't wait to get it inside. To show you this, I've set this up in a landscape layout, but the possibilities for this are actually really neat because you could also have it in a portrait style and be able to hang it on a narrow wall. I like it both ways, so I'm gonna have to try in a few spots in the house to see where I think it will fit best. 
If you love this project as much as I do, smash that like button. I can't believe that in just about three hours and about $25 worth of wood, I only used scrap for my shop, but I was able to calculate exactly how many one by twos I used as well as my plywood. If I had to purchase this new, it would cost me under $25 to make this, which is the exact design that I saw on Pinterest. When I followed the link to where this design I could be purchasing it, it was over 500 US dollars. And for me, that's just not in my budget for things for me to hang on the wall of my home. So I knew I could make this for less with our new Pinterest challenge. The shipping cost for this project would be astronomical as it weighs a ton. And there weren't a lot of shops online that actually would send something like this to Canada. So it was just a win-win for me all around to do this new Pinterest scene. If you watch my channel often, you know that I love designing my own things. And so using someone else's design isn't typically what I do, but I'm trying to show in this Pinterest series that there's lots of designs that you can actually recreate yourself online. With a little bit of time and some upcycled materials, you can keep things out of the landfill, recycle, get rid of scrap you have, and make something amazing for your own home. I can't wait to make this into my own design using some other scraps I have. This was really a neat idea to be able to challenge myself to create something for so much less than if I bought it online. I think this project really speaks for itself. It turned out beautifully and I'm so impressed with it. Pinterest is a great place to be able to find ideas to change them into your own and run with an idea. I really think this was awesome because I'm able to use this in a farmhouse decor or even a bohemian decor. I can change up the colors and use it for many different home decor styles. We were so excited to start this new series today. If you liked our new Pinterest series, make sure you comment down below so we know you're enjoying these videos. If you're not already part of our YouTube family, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We're almost at 75,000 YouTube family members. We are just two days till Christmas and we have lots to do before then. So thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all of your support. I love you guys and I'll see you on the next project.